This video is going to have a look at the uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and how it can be used to explain factors affecting uh, rates of reaction. The uh, distribution is a statistical model that uh, was first put forward by uh, James Maxwell uh, and then later more work was done on it by uh, Ludwig Boltzmann and so it's uh, now got the, uh, the name Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And their work was to uh, consider um, gases and uh, the uh, energy that gas particles have within a particular sample. And the result of their work is uh, something that we now know as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, and it's a graph uh, that shows a distribution of energies. Let's have a look at that. The, uh, the graph is a graph that's uh, plotted on the uh, uh, y-axis. We're plotting the number of particles, um, and on the x-axis we're plotting their energy. Now, the original work that they did was to look at the speed of the particles within the gas sample, um, but uh, I think you know that the speed of a particle would be related to its kinetic energy, and so we're going to simplify it by simply looking at energy. And so what they found was that... Um, there are very few particles that have very low energy. There are slightly more particles that have got a slightly higher energy. And then they found that the most common energy um, would, uh, would obviously have a, a number of particles having that energy. That at the high energy range, again, uh, a smaller number of particles would have very high energy. And, uh, and then very, very few particles have uh, uh, a very high energy going off on the uh, energy axis. And uh, when they plotted all their points, the uh, graph that they came up with uh, had a shape that looked like that. And that's now the uh, common shape that we associate with a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Uh, and it shows us the, uh, the, the variety of different energies that particles within a gas sample might have. Now, mathematically, the, uh, the area under this graph, um, if we uh, shade that area in, that area uh, represents the total number of particles in the sample. Don't worry too much about the maths behind it, but just to say that that uh, area represented under the graph is the total number of particles in a sample. And so for a given sample, um, if we change other parameters, the area under the graph must remain um, constant. All right, now the use of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution really relies uh, around understanding uh, activation energy. So if we look at our x axis, somewhere along that axis there will be an energy that uh, correlates to the activation energy. Every um, reaction has a particular activation energy, and that is the energy that's required um, for that reaction to start and it relates to a particle having sufficient energy for a successful collision to take place, i.e. for bonds to break and then for new bonds to form. So let's assume that blue cross represents the activation energy for this particular um, sample. And I'm um, just drawing a line up there so you can see how it cuts across the, uh, um, the distribution um, of particles. And so that point represents Ea, or our activation energy, and then all the particles represented in that blue shaded area, they all have energy greater than or equal to activation energy, um, and so those particles that are represented there, the ones represented by the blue shading, if they collide with correct orientation, then we'll have a successful collision. So all of those particles have energy greater than or equal to activation energy, and hence will be able to react successfully should they collide with correct orientation. So that's the basic premise of the, uh, um, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and how we can uh, use it. All right, now let's uh, have a look at a change of temperature and how that affects uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and what the effect is then on the rates of reaction. If we uh, draw in our standard Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, I'm just uh, assuming that the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius there. And once again, if we show the activation energy, then the particles uh, represented by the area under the red curve to the right of activation energy are those ones that can react. Now, what happens to that curve if we increase temperature? Well, the first thing we know is that the area under the graph, which is the number of particles, must remain the same. 
um, and uh, uh, we haven't changed the number of particles. So as we draw in a higher temperature, notice that the peak drops slightly, um, and then to the right of the graph we've got more uh, particles at a higher energy, obviously because the temperature is higher. And so we see the graph shifting off to the right. Um, the area under must remain constant. If we now consider those particles at T1, 100 degrees Celsius, that are able to react because they have energy greater than activation energy, that's now shown by the shaded area in red. At the higher temperature, the particles that can react are shown by that shaded area in green. And you can obviously see that at the higher temperature, there are many more particles that are able to react. And that gives an explanation as to why an increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction because more particles have got sufficient energy or energy greater than or equal to activation energy and hence if they collide with correct orientation will have a successful collision. Let's now consider the effect of a catalyst um, on uh, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and hence on the rate of reaction. Again, same graph that we used to Let's put in our activation energy uh, line there. Now, those are the particles that uh, are able to uh, react because they have energy greater than activation energy. Now, what a catalyst does is that it provides an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. So the uncatalyzed reaction would have an activation energy shown by the blue cross. A catalyzed reaction would have one shown by the green cross. And so I've just put in a note there, the catalyst provides an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. So if I now draw the line um, in green, the EA for the catalyzed reaction is shown by that line. And if we now shade in those particles that can react, you can obviously see that for the uncatalyzed reaction, we've got fewer particles. For the catalyzed reaction, we've got many more particles. And so what we're seeing here is that for the catalyzed reaction um, we've now got more particles that have energy greater than or equal to activation energy and so if one of those particles uh, collides with correct orientation we'll have a successful collision and hence the rate of reaction will increase. Finally let's have a look at the effect of concentration. Now, I need to just issue a warning here the work done by Maxwell Boltzmann and uh, the distribution that they came up with uh, is based on an ideal gas model. So the effect of concentration, um, uh, mostly we're going to be dealing with concentration of liquids. It, uh, it doesn't have a direct link, um, but uh, the general argument, um, and obviously it's an analogous situation, we can use it. So uh, I just offer that warning. Uh, this doesn't relate directly because it's not a gas, but still in terms of, uh, you can consider a concentration uh, of a gas in terms of the number of particles per unit volume, but that would have an effect obviously on pressure rather. But stop, let's have a look at a particular graph. Um, once again, Maxwell-Boltzmann graph, um, and uh, we could say that that's for a sample that has a low concentration of particles. Now if we increase uh, the concentration. Again, let me just show the activation energy and those particles that will react. If we increase the concentration, then we've got more particles uh, within the given sample. That's what concentration means. Uh, and so the number of particles is uh, increasing and therefore the area under the graph has increased. And so when we draw a higher concentration graph, we would simply have uh, more particles showing um, underneath uh, that, that graph. And so the number of particles with activation or energy greater than activation energy is shown in that shaded green area. And if you have a look at the low concentration, there the number of particles by that area, high concentration, you can simply see it's got a higher area. And so that gives an explanation that at a higher concentration, more particles uh, are present and so we have more particles with energy greater than or equal to activation energy. And again, if they collide with correct orientation, they will result in a successful collision and the rate of reaction will increase.